Good evening. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for April 18, 2016. Can I have a motion to go into executive sessions for the matters pertaining to the employment history of particular individuals and contractual issues? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Yorktown Central School District Board of Education meeting for April 18, 2016. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance given by Adriana and Rachel and then remain standing for a moment of silence for armed forces, those in our Yorktown Central School District community who have lost loved ones, especially Mary Walsh, a retired CTA from Crom Pond, Eleanor Fortunato, a former Yorktown School District employee, Arthur Wenzel's mother-in-law, Arlene Capozzi's brother, Karen Profita's mother-in-law, Teresa Murdoch's mother, and Joseph Longabardi's father-in-law. Thank you all for waiting for us. We're sorry we were later. Um, we have Crom Pond visiting us we today. We do. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, and thank you so much for being here. We're so excited to see the children, and they've already told me that not only am I going to have good news, I'm going to have a song and a treat. So that it was the treat that caught my attention. Everything before that kind of went over my head, but as soon as there was a mention of treat, I, I got very excited. So at any rate, we are happy to see you all, boys and girls, and thank you for being here with us tonight. And Mrs. Roberts, would you like to begin? Good evening, Dr. Napolitano, Dr. O'Connor, Mr. Cole, Mrs. Carbone, Mrs. Corrado, and Board of Education trustees. Crom Pond Elementary School is honored to be sharing our good news this evening. Part of the mission statement of the Yorktown Central School District is that all students are valued and can make a difference in society. Crom Pond School has embraced this principle by focusing on ways to help others. By others, we do not simply mean only human beings, but other species who are struggling to survive as well. Our fourth graders demonstrated their care and concern for our native birds this year by intensively studying them and, and creating feeding opportunities outside the fourth grade classrooms. Not only was this helpful to the birds, but the students were actively engaged in promoting the well-being of, of a species. Our fifth grade classes have demonstrated their ability to learn about and engage in the natural world by studying the plight of Apis mellifera, also known as the honeybee. Perhaps you have heard the buzz around Crompon School this year. Honeybees, so integral to the health of the planet, are being plagued by a phenomenon known as colony collapse disorder, also called CCD. The students and staff at Crom Pond want to help restore the honeybee population, ensuring that pollination continues to occur, providing us all with the healthiest fruits and vegetables and the beautiful kaleidoscope of flowers we enjoy in our summer gardens. In the course of our honeybee study, a local beekeeper who has joined us this evening provided workshops for all of our fifth graders. Tonight, the classes of five Alessi, five Barbara, five Floor, and five Stern will share with all of you some of the fascinating knowledge that they have acquired over the last month, embracing the principles of STEAM, which is a Board of Education goal highlighted in Dr. Napolitano's action plan. The classes explored ways in which their learning could be expressed through science, technology, engineering, art, math, and music. As Charles Cook so appropriately stated, your deepest roots are in nature, no matter who you are, where you live, or what kind of life you lead, you remain irrevocably linked with the rest of creation. It is with great pride to in invite up Mrs. Floor. Good evening. Um, as Mrs. Roberts said, uh, we really embraced this assignment about the pollinators because 
we had a, a wonderful experience with um, a local beekeeper who I just want to point out happens to be here tonight, Margaret Vandermeiden. Martin Luther King said, whatever affects one directly affects all directly. This is the interrelated structure of reality. At Crown Pond, we endeavor to have all our students become more aware of the power of their actions. Examining real life situations that require individuals to serve as agents of positive change has been part of the focus of our fifth grade year. We were fortunate enough to have our PTA provide funds for workshops with Ms. V M Vandermeiden. The students learned about the vital role that honeybees play in pollinating our food. Through paired research projects, the students learned about the amazing society of honeybees and how they effectively work together to provide us with the rich diversity we experience in our food systems. In the United Nations report on economics and biodiversity, Pavan Sukhdev coined this situation brilliantly when he stated, not a single honeybee has ever sent you an invoice. And that is part of the problem because most of what comes from nature is free because it is not invoiced, because it is not priced, because it is not traded in markets, we tend to ignore it. We hope that through the voices of our students, all of you will be moved to do what you can to help sustain these fascinating pollinators while there's still time to make a difference. Awareness is really important because once you learn something, it can shift the way you look at things or the way you make your choices on what you eat and what you grow. And I know that you all have a at the school of our garden. And that is a wonderful place to be at. You can attract the leaves to your schoolyard. Even a potted plant or a butterfly bush or something in your landscape. Georgia. We research the signs behind We research the signs behind colony collapse disorder, also known as CCD. We learn that there are multiple causes for CCD. Possible causes include pesticides contamination, stress from transporting bees across the country to pollinate, weakening of the bees' immune systems, the existence of crop monocultures or food deserts in the Varroamite. choose a hexagonal shape for their honeycomb because, as Charles Darwin said, it's absolutely perfect in ec economizing labor and wax. The hexagons fit together perfectly and store the most honey. Beeswax is a vital for, for creating and capturing the hives. It is the duct tape of the ancient civilizations. 
It is never spo it never spoils and is used today for many products. It is the only natural wax on earth. Each of the six walls is exactly the same width, and the walls meet at an angle of precisely 120 degrees, producing one of the perfect figures of geometry, a regular hexagon. The cells are 1 80th of an inch thick and are very light, yet can support 30 times their own weight. The structure of the hexagon allows for tension when, fil when filled, which keeps it strong. The cells are used to store honey, nectar, and pollen to provide a nursery for bee larvae. The cells are constructed at a 13 degree angle in order to keep the honey from dripping out. Then the cells are capped with wax. Would you believe that honeybees like caffeine just like we do? Certain flowers have caffeine in their nectar. When bees extract nectar from a caffeinated flower, it makes them more active. Hence the phrase, busy as a bee. A bee who has ingested caffeinated nectar is more apt to get their vital work done. Caffeine also helps the bee's long-term memory. <laughs> Hi, I'm Naomi. Bees are so precise in what they have to do that they engage in two dances to communicate information to their colony. In their waggle dance, bees will face the sun, turn a certain number of degrees right or left to teach the others where to go. To know how far the way of flowers are, they waggle a certain number of seconds forward before turning. Each second equals one kilometer. Hi, I'm Devin. Honeybees can calculate angles, direction, and distance to patches of flowers that give nectar and pollen, which is used to make honey to water sources or to new nest site locations. Hi, I'm Grant. The bees use the sun and the Earth's magnetic field to help, help them navigate. The bees have an inner compass, eyes that can see ultraviolet light, and they get their mathematical training by their genetic code. Hi, I'm Samson. The orientation of the dance describes the angle from the feeding source to the hive. The angle is in relation to the sun. Bees have the ability to see ultraviolet and polarized light and can determine the location of the sun at all times, even on cloudy days. The duration of the dance communicates how far away the source is. Hi, I'm Bada. The bee tells the other workers to fly toward the sun or away from the sun. The number of runs in a given time indicates distance to, to the food source. Hi, I'm Mitchell. The angle at which the bee runs gives the angle of the food source related to the hive in the sun. We researched bees in ancient times and found out that bees date back as far as 146 million years ago. Hieroglyphics exist that show early beekeepers tending to their hives. Honey is found in tombs in Egypt, could still be consumed today because it does not spoil. They do. Oh, really? Yeah? It's good. It's good. It's good. Hi, I'm Rachel. Hi, I'm Adriana. Hi, I'm Isa. Hi, I'm Sophia. And I'm Noah. A tessellation of a flat surface is the tiling of a plane using one or more geometric shapes called tiling with no overlaps and no gaps. Our class created tessellations using a repeated pattern. Bees' tessellations relate to our tessellations because bees create a honeycomb, which is repeating pattern with no gaps or overlaps using hexagons. Our tessellations were original designs or inspired by others. To make a tessellation, you first have to make a perfect square based on the size of the paper. We decided to make a square that would evenly make three rows. Next, if you want to make a free shape, you have to cut from one corner to the other. 
Then you flip the cut out piece over and tape it to the opposite side. It should look the same on, the other, on each side, just facing the other way. If you want to make a shape, like an arrow, then you have to measure it so they are exact and they would fit on the page. Once you're done with the shape, you have to start tracing it across the paper. Then you do the same on the next row, and so on, and so on. If you do a basic shape, then you trace it across the paper. Next, you can either uh, trace it going the same way on the next row, or you can trace it the opposite direction in the next row. Then you trace it in the opposite of the row last row, or if you did it in the same direction, then you trace it in the same direction. You repeat this pattern until you have covered the entire page. The next step is to color them. You have two options. You can either color it in rows or in diagonal rows. Every row, you switch colors. We only did two colors. We did two colors so that when you look at the tessellations, one of the colors pop and the other one looks hidden, but you can also do as many colors as you want. The last step is to write your name on it and then you're done. These are the tessellations we created. Very nice. Very nice. Great job. Hi, I'm Kaylin. Did you know that April is Poetry Month? In Mrs. Stern's class, we have been connecting our poetry unit and language arts to our B study in science. Hi, I'm Najai. One aspect of our poetry unit is to learn about and write different types of invented poems. An invented poem is a type of poetry where you follow specific rules. One type of invented form of poetry is a haiku poem. A haiku poem is a three-line form of Japanese poetry. In most cases, the first line is five syllables, the second, seven syllables, and the third, five syllables again. Hi, I'm Haley. Haiku poems should also deal with nature, and so they were the perfect form of invented poetry to blend with our study of bees. Hi, I'm Kayliana. Here are just a few examples of our haiku poem about bees. We've enjoyed learning and writing them, and hope you do too. Bees are important. They supply one third of food, help us protect them. Bees produce honey. They play a b very big role, strict social structure. There are three bee jobs, the queen, the worker, and drone. They all work together. They're buzzing outside, soothing the brain and body with their calming noise. A lot of bees die. Bees need to be protected. Don't use pesticides. Hi, my name is Kevin. Through pollination, bees are responsible for one-third of our total food production. Without bees, the following crops would be impacted and the food chain greatly affected. Hi, I'm Isabella. Almonds, 100% of almond crops are pollinated by honeybees. The holes are used as feed for farm cattle and chickens. Hi, I'm Gabby. The loss of bees would result in complete loss of almonds, which are eaten directly by humans and also utilized in livestock feed. Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm going to talk about fruits and vegetables. Did you know that 90% or 9 tenths of apples, cherries, cranberries, blueberries, tangerines, oranges, and grapefruits are dependent upon honeybee pollinations? Other crops affected would be green beans, pumpkins, pears, plums, avocados, cantaloupes, cucumbers, honeydew, kiwi, watermelons, sunflowers, squash, broccoli, onions, carrots, and the list goes on. Hi, I'm Adelina. More than 80% or four-fifths of worldwide, bees perform more than 80% or four-fifths of worldwide pollination. Without bees, we would all be living in a completely different world. The availability of food and other goods would be greatly diminished, with some food supplies no longer available. This would mean that the nutrient and diet throughout the world would be poor. Also, as we have learned in economics, as the supply of food and goods decrease because of the loss of the honeybee, the demand would increase, which would make the prices go up, 
This would cause a worldwide economic strain as bees are presently responsible for about $200 billion in global agriculture revenue. As long as one has a garden, one has a future. As long as one has a future, one is alive. Francis Hodgson Burnett. Excellent. So true. Jonathan, we have a special gift for each of you that we hope that we hope you will help you remember to help the honeybees. (laughs) 
Yes. Sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, honey. Yeah. Beautiful. Black-eyed Susans. I love these. Wow. These are great. How sweet. That's really lovely. Very nice. Yes. Yes. Lovely. Yeah. You can just give her two more. She'll give them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Say something, Mrs. Roberts, going to say something. Aren't they amazing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's give them all another round of applause. So we have some signs here in the, in the section, Save the Bees. And I have to say, boys and girls, I am certainly going to miss you all when you're gone and you're coming here to the middle school. Oh. You really are fabulous, so we are going to miss you. Um, Thank you to our staff. If our staff could all stand and be recognized for those who joined us this evening, that'd be wonderful. We a lot of fourth grade teachers joining us this evening as well. So thank you. And of course, our students and families, thank you so much for making time to join us this evening. I hope you're as proud as them. I know you're as proud as them as we are. So in closing, in the words of George Santaya, the earth has its music for those who will listen. Have a beautiful evening. Thank, thank you. you. Mrs. Roberts, thank you. You always bring us such interesting things. And students, I didn't think I knew that much about bees, and now I guess I'm not allowed to be afraid of them anymore. <laughs> and the song, I think I like your words much better than the other ones. You did a great job. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I, I feel the same way. I am always so excited when I know Crom Pond is coming because I know you're going to do a beautiful job. And you did. Mrs. Floor, you have a second career. You can, you can rewrite songs and we'll all get on the folk wagon and sing along. Uh, I do appreciate the treat so much, children, but more importantly, I appreciate all the information that you brought us about bees, how important they are to our environment, and how our obligation to uh, make it a point to ensure that they're here for generations to come. I think that's always the important message that's a takeaway for me, is that um, we really do uh, have to be conscientious about our world, our earth, taking good care of it so that all of us will have an opportunity and someday your own children will have an opportunity to benefit from all of the things that you benefited from. And the time goes very fast. When I heard Mrs. Roberts say she's going to miss you when you go to the middle school, I just thought of something. Rachel, when I saw you, I just can't remember the period of time, but you were at Mohansic School and what kind of Girl Scout, you weren't a Girl Scout, you weren't a Brownie, you were something, what, what were you when I came to read a story? That's what? Daisy. That's daisy Troop. So you went from being a Daisy Trooper to a fifth grader, mm -hmm. and that seems to have gone very quickly for me. <laughs> so I know that your parents are all going to be watching very carefully because the time will go quickly. But I think what they're going to be proud of is what we're proud of. We're, we're going to know that when that time comes that you're fully grown and that you're leaving us, you're going with all of the things that are going to make you wonderful citizens of the world, and the world is going to be a better place because of you and then we all know that we did our job and you have such phenomenal teachers when I saw who got up uh, your fifth grade teachers and many of your fourth grade teachers are here and I saw Miss Telosi somewhere and she's gonna save the bees I know that she's gonna go home tonight and figure out what we can all do to save the bees um, so I do I do want to thank you I enjoyed the evening very much and I wanted to share with you I brought this actually to share it with the board but uh, Dr. O'Connor and I and Mrs. Horowitz who's gonna be your principal next year and uh, Dr. Barada, who is the library media specialist at the middle school, we had an opportunity to go to Troy, New York last Thursday. Mm -hmm. We were lost, but we finally got to Troy. Anytime you go someplace with me, you can be sure. <laughs> uh, we almost ended up in Troy, near Greece. But at any rate, um, we went to Troy because we received an award, our school district, 
and it's a New York State School District of Character Award. Mm -hmm. And what you would be proud of, there's 700 districts in New York State. We were the only district to receive the award. So that's because of all of you, because they believe that the students here really do have exemplary character and always want to do the right thing. So we're going to hang this up in the district office, but this belongs to all of you. So thank you all for coming. We're going to take a five minute break so we can say good evening to you and then we'll continue with the board meeting. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Really nice. Thank you. They do a great job. We are up to public comment. Anybody wishing to speak? Reshmi? <laughs> Hello. Hi, good evening. I'm a little taller. Okay. Well, on behalf of the Foundation for Excellence, I just wanted to uh, say thank you uh, to all of you and to our community members for coming out and supporting the event. We had several attendees uh, from the Board of Ed, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Reynolds, uh, Mrs. Corrado, Mr. Mignani. So we do want to say thank you. It was a great event. Um, we did very well in the silent auction as well as a number of attendees. We honored our five principals and it was just a great night. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for hosting thank you. it. Thank you very much. Foundation does an excellent job and they do a lot of things to raise money for our teachers and for our students and we're very pleased and oftentimes um, some of the things that the teachers actually bring to the board meetings are actually uh, sponsored from grants from the foundation so we're much appreciative of that thank you Reshmi well they'll be giving out their annual grants at the end of the year yes, like they, they usually do they right? usually do that yep and I, I think they're probably yeah. uh, review they're reviewing soon the applications that have been submitted. Yep. Yeah. We're, we're very fortunate to have We are them. very fortunate. Okay. We are up to, anybody else wishing to speak? Okay. We are up to public, um, superintendent's report. So we're budget adoption night. Yeah. This is a very important <laughs> night for us. So we're uh, excited as the board knows and as the community has observed. Uh, we spend a lot of time really working on the budget for the next school year, and it keeps getting early, as Tom explains. Um, over the 10 years that I'm here, I can tell you that every year it's a little bit sooner that we start working on it. We're no longer into the new school year, and uh, we're, we're busily engaged in uh, what we're going to need and how we're going to fund what we need. Uh, so that our students continue to have a great education. <laughs> and as the board saw tonight, this is the way kids should be learning. I wish this is the way I had learned in elementary mm -hmm. school, an interdisciplinary approach to everything that they learn about, which includes music, art, English language, art, science, technology, math, a conservation, character education. So when you kind of see all of that put together in one, you know, one unit, mm -hmm. It's, it's a wonderful thing, and to note that every fifth grader in the, you know, is having the same shared experience, no matter which teacher they have, I, I just think that's incredible, and I thank all of you for supporting uh, the STEAM initiative that has taken place uh, last year, and more specifically, and more particularly this year. But anyway, the budget season, finally for us, all that hard work is over, all the presentations are behind us, and i, I just like Tom to um, speak a little bit about um, one or two things that have come our way that we want to share with the board and then continue with the adoption. Thanks, Dr. Napolitano. Uh, since we last presented the budget, uh, the superintendent presented the budget to the board, um, we have had uh, about 15 students in special education that may require outplacements next year that we did not budget for originally. So we're looking at this time to ask you before you adopt the budget to add an additional $400,000 to special education uh, in the outplacement categories, the general outplacement category, until those uh, assignments are definitively known. We're not asking you to increase the tax rate. We'd, uh, uh, to comply with the tax cap, we would ask that you uh, add an additional $400,000 from revenue to offset it so that there's no tax levy impact to taxpayers. Tom, what is what is the anticipated tax rate? The tax rate increase in the largest uh, municipality, which is Yorktown, is 0.26%, uh, so just over one quarter of 1%. And just so the public's aware, what was our um, maximum tax cap? 0.32%. So we almost maxed it out. Yes. And what is that 0.26 equates to what is the budget dollar increase? 
budget the, to budget. The budget to budget increase is uh, one half of one percent, and it is five hundred five thousand dollars, which is um, eighteen thousand dollars greater than the prior year change. And that includes the four hundred thousand dollars. It does. <coughs> okay. Anybody have any questions? Any comments? Mike. Uh, well, I guess Tom, one of the things that we, sh you know discuss is what what other options would be available to the to the board aside from increasing the budget the only other increase would be to ask us to manage the four hundred thousand dollars in the context of next year's budget so it's, it's a large number but that would be an option um, or to try to uh, cut an additional four hundred thousand dollars out of the current budget to offset it those are the only two options you have I've explored every particular option that we can run a few of the scenarios by the auditors uh, so those are the only viable options that you have okay Anthony? And just again that's not increasing the tax rate at all no the tax rate won't change uh, the, but the budget will increase from uh, a one-tenth of one percent increase to a uh, five tenths of one percent increase but this money is going to go directly to students. It's, it's for use for students. It's not for anything else. It's going for education. Absolutely. We have a requirement through special education to, uh, mm -hmm. to provide the most appropriate setting. Uh, and these, uh, these uh, 15 cases that have come up, uh, there does not appear to be an alternative that we can service in-house. Since um, Mrs. O'Shea took over as a director of special education, she has significantly decreased the budget. This is an anomaly this year. She is normally going down every year. Is that correct? She's managed her department extremely well, has she not? She has effectively controlled the cost of the department so that this, year, this year's level of expenditure is roughly $2 million lower than it was five years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenally efficient department that she supervises. Can, can I just ask, and maybe Florence is, is best positioned to address this. Um, we've made a really strong push and a concentrated effort to bring as many students in-house as we can. Um, so what, what would be some of the reasons why we wouldn't be able to manage some of these children in our current programs? Um, I can begin that conversation. Um, sometimes we have students that are new to the district or... Okay, all righty. Um, and they may have some therapeutic needs, for example, that may exceed what we can provide within the district. So that might be one, one situation. And I don't know whether Mrs. O'Shea you'd like to add, you know the, you know the students more intimately and their Sorry, needs. I didn't, I didn't see. Uh, no, that's fine, that's fine. She's hiding, <laughs> hiding behind all You know, I would just say bef equipment. before Lisa comes up, generally we, we, look, at student, we look at student needs across the, the uh, department and we, we are able to identify similar needs and create classes, but these are situations that I believe that we cannot do that. in an out-of-district program and then we have had three students that we've placed out of district from our existing schools thank you uh, in addition we're looking at nine current students for out-of-district placements next year and two incoming uh, kindergartners for out-of-district placements right. we don't have at the secondary level there are eight students we don't have a cohort of students with the same learning mm -hmm. needs that we can group together because their ages are so varied between 6th and 11th grade uh, we do have a group of kindergarten and first graders. We will hope that after next year when we have an opportunity to better prepare and enhance our abilities to care for the children in district, we can develop a class for the 17 and 18 school year that will work for that mm -hmm. cohort of seven elementary students. But right now, we feel that we need more time to prepare. Um, These were unexpected needs uh, that have developed. And, and so everybody's clear. Out of district placement is the last option. You exhaust yes. everything mm -hmm. within our schools for the least restrictive environment all the yep. way up until you have to do this. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I don't, if from our presentation that we did several board meetings ago, we do have a continuum of services and the most restrictive is an out of district program. We really try hard because we believe in the 
in the idea that students should be in their community schools and we want to make every effort to do that. So this is really an anomaly for us and something that we want to be able to build our capacity to bring the students back with some additional uh, supports in place in district. We're just not there at this time. Yeah. You know, I would just add, when a student moves from out of the district to our district and they are already in an out of district placement, it's the obligation of the CSE to review that program and make an immediate placement. Um, and many times it's the continued, the continued out of district placement until such, such time that you can evaluate more closely. So that's one factor as well. And I think when we look back on from three years ago when we uh, started an ABA uh, for a program at the primary level for students who are on the autism spectrum, uh, it was so, it's been so successful because we had 18 months to prepare for it knowing the preschoolers who were moving in. Uh, this, we need that same amount of time to be able to more, be more strategic and we do have some professional development lined up starting in May and hopefully we can create in-district programs to support the students. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Lisa. Thank you. Anthony, any more questions? No, I'm good. All right. Um, so, Tom, what are the budget numbers? <coughs> What's the budget? The budget for 2016-17 is 98 million 010, 98 million and ten thousand dollars. Wait, 98 million and ten thousand dollars. Right. Okay. The projected tax rate increase is 0.26 percent. Okay, in the town of Yorktown, right? In, in the, the town of Yorktown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? No. We good, guys? Okay. Then resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education adopts a proposed budget for the 2016-17 school year in the total amount of $78,010,000 and the set amount $98,010,000 and the set amount of $98,010,000 to be proposed to the district's voters on May 17, 2016. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Guys, thank you very much. I know this is a tough budget Thanks. season. Thank you. thank you. We are up to our tax report card. So whereas the New York State education law requires the district to prepare and approve and make publicly available the 2016-17 property tax report card, therefore resolve that the Board of Education of the Yorktown Central School District approves the 1617 property tax report card and authorizes the superintendent to publish it in accordance with law. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We're up to the education report. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, Yvette, if you could put up our outline. There are several items on the education report this evening, and the first one uh, has to do with several of our staff members. We're very proud that three of our staff members presented, uh, did technology presentations at the Lower Hudson Regional Information Center Technology Expo that took place on April 8th. Uh, Adele Kivel, who's a, a teacher at Crompon School, and David Lease presented a workshop entitled Empowering Student Learning Through Classroom Assessment. And this involves the use of document cameras to immediately assess the learning of the students and to give feedback to the teacher immediately. Um, and, and we'll demonstrate this to you at some point in the report. Um, and it was so popular that they had to add more chairs to the room, so we got tremendous feedback and positive feedback on that workshop. And Amanda Burns, who works in our technology department, also presented Getting Creative with Google Docs, which again, was ve a very packed workshop and the feedback uh, was just tremendous. We've received emails from staff in other districts uh, wanting to come and visit to see some of the work that we're doing in the district. I just would mention that this is the same expo where the district was awarded the Pioneer Achievement Award several years ago for our work in technology. So we continue to be leaders in the region and we're very proud of the work of our teachers, our principals, our staff, and certainly our students. Uh, the second item is we have a couple of nice trainings that are going 
going on this month in the district. Um, we continue to train our teachers. This time it will be our kindergarten through ninth grade teachers on the use of the STAR online assessment. You'll recall this is an online ELA and math assessment that the students um, are administered three times a year. They're computer-based tests and they're for growth in learning. And we continue to be impressed with the data and the resources that are available with the STAR assessment. We'll be pushing that assessment up to the ninth grade next year. Um, we're continuing our ELA module training with our kinder kindergarten through fifth grade teachers. This has been a wonderful sequence and series of, of training where we're aligning our curriculum. Um, I hope that we have the opportunity to, pr to present this at the board meeting. We've, we've developed a sequence of instruction that begins with nursery rhymes and moves to fables and then the students read nonfiction and, and then read social justice items in fourth and fifth grade. So it's a wonderful sequence and our teachers are embracing it and we're becoming experts in this instruction. Uh, there's math training this month with grade one in particular as they integrate the modules and the, um, cha the change in curriculum. At the high school, our world language teachers just finished a pretty exciting day with Greg Duncan, who's a world language expert that works, he actually works all over the world, and he's developing high interest, helping our teachers to develop high interest units. It actually, the units begin in the middle school and then continue in the high school, so we're uh, aligning and sequencing our instruction there. Um, our teachers at the high school have been, the Algebra two teachers in particular, have been focusing on statistics training, and we're so talented internally <laughs> that one of our teachers has been able to lead the training in statistics, and this is about 40% of the Algebra two regions, so we've been working in that area. And then finally, as the uh, finale of the education report, I did want to share some, uh, some data related to uh, ELA and math assessment, so I think we'll do ELA first, um, Yvette. Okay, before you, you see a chart, and it's a two-year comparison of our, uh, actually our, our participation and our test refusals from 2014 to 2016. You'll see, if you, if you begin in the first column, the total enrollment in 2014-15 was 1,546 students. This is in grades three through eight, and the enrollment is not significantly different. It's a little larger in grades in uh, year 15-16, but if you go to the bottom, the very bottom, the, um, the percent of refusals, our test refusals in 14-15 were at 27.5 percent in grades 3 through 8, and they, they increased just slightly in the 15-16 school, school year where we had 31.9 percent of our students requesting refusal, their parents requesting refusal of the assessments. In looking at this closely over the last several weeks, there are implications that we did want to share with the board and share with the public. These are implications that the Lower Hudson Regional Information Center has been working with the State Ed Department to look at what, what are the outcomes of these refusals. And there are three significant areas that I wanted to share with you. Districts that, that have fewer than 95% of students participating in the state assessments will fall into the area that's called lack of making adequate yearly progress. They will not make AYP. And AYP AYP has been on New York State report cards for years, and one of the criteria is that 95% of students participate. The second implication is that fail, failure to, to meet this or make this AYP for three consecutive years has the potential to place a school in what's called a LAP status, that's called local assistance plan status. And what that means is that a school would have to do an improvement plan, uh, which is pretty significant. And then the third implication that is that when you are a LAP status, if your school is a LAP status, it is publicly announced and it requires the district, as I had said, to develop a plan um, and post it on the district website. So uh, we wanted to make sure that everyone understood that that it appears there appear to be consequences. So are, if there are any questions related to ELA and refusals, I, I would answer them now and then we can look at math. Anybody have questions? I, I, have, I have one. If we are become a lap school, a school becomes a lap school because of the lack of students taking the test, mm -hmm. which is we have no control over, how do you come up with a plan because you can't force people to take a test if they've been talked out of taking the test? 
Having done improvement plans for special education in my prior experience, it would be parent education. We would, be, um, we would have to develop a plan where we further educate parents and students as to the requirement. Th that's the only thing I can think of in terms of what the plan might look like at this point. But we would look for guidance from the state, certainly, uh, for what they would require in such a plan. Okay. We, we won't be alone. No, uh, we won't I be know. alone. <laughs> and I would just ask us to quickly take a look at mathematics over two years, and the, this, these are the data in mathematics, and I'll bring you just down to the last line. The percentage of refusals in 2014-15 was at 31.9%, and in 15-16 at 32.7. So it, there's not a, a significant difference, but we believe it's significant that 30, a third of our students are not participating in the state assessments. And again, the implications are the same with mathematics. Any questions? Did you guys have a chance to look at the tests as they came through? Have, has anybody looked at the assessments? Um, as we're allowed to, we have, yeah. Mm -hmm. And or was there a significant difference in what the state had promised they were going to do? You know, Jackie, I, I guess I, I'm not prepared to answer okay. that right now, right. but we could, we could do that potentially in the future. Okay. When, you know, the items will be released, and we certainly, when they're released, we'll be able to um, take a look more closely, and I suspect they'll be released pretty soon. All right. And, and statewide, this was about the same rate that everybody had? People weren't. You know, I'm seeing 20% and a little greater than 20% in articles that I've read statewide, so we tend to, to be a little higher. Oh, this area is. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody have questions? No? All right. We're up to board reports. Um, audit committee, Christine, I'm going to look to you. Right. There's nothing new to report at this time. Okay. Fiscal advisory? <coughs> Um, really nothing new at this point. We are um, going to meet again in the next uh, 10 days to two weeks. Uh, we have, we're working on scheduling that. Um, busy time of the year. A lot of people's calendars are full. Uh, but we do have some things to discuss uh, when we get there. Okay. Uh, policy, Karen, is not here tonight. I'm sure she's moving along on policy. Okay. And steering, um, <coughs> we had a pre-bid meeting for... The large part of our last project last week, I don't know how that went, we'll know tomorrow at our uh, steering committee meeting, we're gearing up for the two summer projects, the tennis courts and the electrical line, which has actually already started. It goes out to the field and we'll just, we're still in limbo as to what we're going to do about the other summer projects. And that's about it for that. All right, we're up to board action items. A motion to accept the board minutes for the March 14th and the March 28th, 2016 meetings. So moved. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, treasurer's report. A motion to accept the treasurer's report from March 2016. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, extra classroom activity report. A motion to accept the extra classroom activity report from March 2016. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The board meeting calendar. So I think <coughs> there's got to be a little discussion before we have a motion mm -hmm. to, and that is um, we have to talk about this BOCES meeting date. Now, is that the BOCES? Do we know what date that meeting is? Yes. What date is it? So it's right after a week's break. We have this struggle for 10 years. No, it's the, it's the 18th. It's the Tuesday. It's the Tuesday. It's the 18th this year. What is it going to be in 17? That's what it my question is. It says 18 on the calendar that I'm looking at right here. Okay. I can't hear, I can't hear what they say. I'm sorry. Right? So it would, be, it would definitely be the 18th. It's the, I call it. <coughs> so that's after we've had a... Guidance guys, I don't know what to do. You Who schedules that? Yeah, BOCES. It's that's BOCES date. They schedule it. I mean, I wish BOCES would say you had to. Every district had to do it within the same week, as opposed to on the same How day. How many districts are involved in that vote? Seventeen. So they have to generically yes. pick a day. Hmm. I mean, just. We'll do the best do we, do we want to do, but what my question, I guess, is do we just want to have a board meeting on that day and be done with it, or do we want to just try and have 
a special meeting in the morning like we always do. Special meeting. <coughs> special meeting. You want another board meeting? No, it's not another board meeting. Instead, instead of having the Monday meeting, we're having to Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that might be a good. That one. works. That'll work. Because this way it'll that's save your idea. morning out. That's probably better. No preference. It's six of one to half a dozen of the other. Well, my only my only concern with doing it that way is that it, we have spring recess right before, so we would setting the agenda is difficult when we have a week off. Mm -hmm. But you know, we can make it work. So we would have our meetings would be the 3rd of April and the 18th of April. We wouldn't have one on the 24th. You'd hold that for a retreat in case we needed it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I don't, why don't we just come in early and do the, like we're doing tomorrow? It's we can easier do, that. do, our, you know, do our, our regular meeting on the 24th then? Yeah, because you're not, the agenda isn't going to be ready. You're going to have a a day to put the agenda together? No, we kind of do agenda it, we, we that do it, look like? we do it the Thursday before we left for break. Uh, it's a useless agenda. I mean, why don't you just we'll go early and then we'll keep it the 24th and you'll have a real meeting. I think that's just my opinion, but I'll go with the flow here. I, I don't have a problem either way. I just find that we get okay, to this so Tuesday morning date and it, we're struggling to find four people because everybody works. I mean, it's very hard for people to get together and it becomes very difficult. Um, I, I dumped it on Yvette this year. Hmm. So I, I, just, I just would like to settle it and know what we're going to do. We, we've consistently tried to not have meetings other than Monday. I know. So. Right. That's. But we are required to have this postseason vote. And we do every <laughs> year. And we show up reluctantly, but we do. This has to so be decided tonight. Why Jack? change now? If, if we adopt the calendar, we should decide it tonight. I mean, let's just do it like we do it every year and just go in there and give it our best. So Monday Tuesday. It didn't fail us yet. Fine. <laughs> so what are we saying the meeting dates are, Anthony? 8-15, April 18, 2017, be there. <laughs> <laughs> huh? And the 24th. He's saying in the morning, up, <clears throat> on a Tuesday, in the morning. April 18th. Okay, so we're going to have our, our board meetings will be both. the 3rd and the 24th? Right. And then the, the Board of Education meeting will be April 24th. Right. Yes. Right. Almost similar to what we're doing tomorrow. We're going for both these, right? Right. Same thing. Yeah. You don't have to set that meeting, so you don't have the struggle of trying to, you know, herd everybody together and make sure you have a quorum. No, that's, that's the problem. Exactly. That's why I'm saying let's go in the morning, the 18th, and then you don't have to struggle. Am I crazy here? Let's do the meeting the 24th. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right? That's fine. So now you don't have to struggle. Because <laughs> it's on your calendar and you're going to be there. Am I there tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> right then. Was I there last year? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and 11 years ago? I've been there and for And I think worst time. case scenario, we can always find a way to make it, even if I'm five mm -hmm. or ten minutes late to a Val Sal breakfast or what have you. I can FaceTime. I think we always find a way to make sure that there's a quorum is what I'm trying to get to. I would like a copy of this tape. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to use it next year for <laughs> against Christine. Uh -huh. meeting date, okay? She said, okay. <laughs> you it remember. is what it is. <laughs> I don't want the minutes, I want the video. Sent an email said we do not have a quorum. Someone is going to step up. We always do here. Yes. All right. Notice Mike is very quiet. Yeah, I notice Mike. <laughs> All right, are we okay with the board meeting dates? Yes. Everybody's good yes. with them? To, yes. What are the what are the green? That is uh Here. Days. No days students. Off. Right, that's days. That's no, that's so great. No, no, no. The the dates that are green. yellow but the green, not red. red. The light green is when school is closed and the dark green is next students. Nope. Okay. Which the, one are you looking at? I'm looking at like October twenty fourth. January 23rd, March 27th. What are those dates? Are they board meetings? You're asking me, you're telling me. Like Red BOE dates, blue tentative retreats. Is that supposed yes. to be blue? Blue and yellow makes green? Uh, yes. Ah. <laughs> so we're, hold, we're, we're holding dates well, for you, retreats. You highlighted blue with yellow, so now it's green. 
Where do you have the retreats now? <laughs> October 24th is the retreat. Is that what October you're October 24th, January 23rd, <laughs> March 27th. So those are the retreat, tentative retreat dates. Correct, yes. Okay. All right. Just, just making sure I can not lose my mind. I, I, you're not losing your mind. This is the hardest count I've ever read in 11 years. <laughs> Yvette. You did a really good job, Yvette. Don't take, I like it. I don't think Don't take it personally, Yvette. It looks very colorful. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's the prettiest calendar I've ever read, though. It's got an interdisciplinary it Yeah, it works. I'm good at that. It's work. mathematical, it's autistic. I'm not sure these, these retreat dates will work, but that's okay. All right, so what do you they want to change them? Meeting. No, they're tentative. I'm just, like, March 27th. And that, that's it. usually a really busy time of the year. I'm not sure we're going to grab a retreat there, but okay. It's fine. If we don't, we'll. Well, well move I, it I the, else. the other thought was it, it might be needed for budget at that point too. You never knew. Yeah, it's fine. But that, that's what I mean. It's a work in progress. We can always. Well, you could just block off every single weekend. Monday. I, that's what I do anyway. So. <laughs> All right. That's why I don't like when you start moving things to Tuesday. All right. Are we good? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Good. Okay. When's the year go on? Can I have a motion to accept the 2016-17 Yorktown School District Board of <coughs> Education meeting calendar? And so moved. Thank Second. Thank you. <coughs> All, All those, those in favor. favor. Uh, I'm getting there. <laughs> it's tiring today. Mm -hmm. All right. Personnel. It's weird that okay. to look at the same way. Upon recommendation of the superintendent, a motion that the following be approved. We have um, certified personnel. We have part-time and temporary appointments. We have regular substitute appointments. We have an amendment of an appointment. We have other compensation. We have co-curricular and coaches, a leave of absences, and we have classified per personnel. We have permanent appointments. Seasonal appointments and a resignation. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We are up to <coughs> creation and elimination of job titles. Be, re be it resolved that the Board of Education does hereby approve the creation of a 1.0 Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction and a 1.0 FTE Director of Student and Staff Evaluation data effective April 19, 2016. These positions are subject to the New York State Education Department guidelines. Be it further resolved that the Board of Education does hereby approve the elimination of the 1.0 FTE Deputy Superintendent position effective September 1, 2016. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We have a ratification of the Yorktown CSEA Custodial Unit 9249-01 MOA, whereas a negotiating team for the Yorktown Central School District and the Yorktown CSEA Custodial Unit executed a memorandum of agreement dated March 1, 2016 for a four-year successor collectively negotiated agreement to that one that expired on June 30th, 2019. That 15. didn't expire. Yeah. 15. It, yeah, you got to change it. If that, the date is wrong, expired on two, uh, 2015, not 19. Um, and for the rest of it, um, can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Business office. Um, a motion to re rescind the uh, student assistance services agreement previously approved at the February 22nd, 2016 board meeting in the amount of $14,220 for the 15-16 school year. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the revised agreement resolved upon the recommendation of the Board of Education hereby authorizes the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with student assistance services for comprehensive educational pre prevention and intervention services in the amount of $18,900 for the 15-16 school year at Mildred East Strang <coughs> Middle School. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Budget transfers, a motion to approve the following budget transfers. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? RJT indemnity, um, a motion to approve the attached RJT indemnity agreement. So moved. Second. Um, discussion, this is just for that um, it's for vehicle. The, the vehicle they bring before the uh, end of the school year each year. Okay. Correct. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Health and welfare services, resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent. The Board of Education um, execute, authorizes the Board of Education to execute contracts for health and welfare services provided to students who reside in other districts but who are attending non-public schools in the Yorktown Central School District during the 15-16 school year. Sample contract is attached. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
Health and Welfare, a motion to approve the contract for health and welfare services provided to resident pupils attending non-public schools in other districts, and the districts are listed. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? A cleaning service vendor, a motion to appoint Building Stars of New York as the district's cleaning service vendor commencing May 1st, 2016 through April 30th, 2017 at a cost of $1,395 to maintain, I'm assuming that's per month, to maintain common internal building areas at the French Hill School and include contingency costs for any slash all annual, additional annual services, stripping and waxing of floors as identified by the owner at an agreed upon cost proposal. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> All in favor. Tax cert. Motion to approve the following tax cert resolution. By the order of the Supreme Court, the state of New York held in and for the County of Westchester on the fifth day of April 2016, a school tax refund in the amount of $191,924.47 is due to Takana Corporate Park LLC for the years 2010 to 13. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Special education plan. A motion to approve the attached Special Education District plan. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Lisa, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, special education. A motion to arrange the following special education placements as of April 18, 2016. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Kids Express, a motion to approve the following contract increase. Kids Express Spark for after school social skills classes, increase of two classes for a total of 11 for the 15 16 school year, increase of $2,400 total, contract not to exceed $17,400. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gifts, grants, and donations. Motion to accept with gratitude to the Yorktown Central School District. $4,386 from the Friends of Yorktown Ice Hockey to offset the costs for participation on the ice hockey team. $600 reimbursement from the Huskers Club for the bus transportation to the JVB Lax Scrimmage. Uh, Mohansic School, $500 from the Mohansic PTA to fund cultural enrichment programs for Mohansic students. So moved. Second. Discussion? Go ahead. Tom, don't we usually get the money for the hockey team during the season? What? What happened there? We, we typically get it before the season begins. Yeah. Um, but then based on whatever additional practices or, or something they decide on, they contribute uh, above what they've already given. So So this is a catch up to it's get It's like a reconciliation. Yeah. yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're up to board comment. Anthony? I just have to say, and I'm not surprised, but what a wonderful job Crompon did. Amazing kids, amazing teachers. Lori was great. So thank them when you go. Fantastic job tonight. Thank you. Yeah. And Christine? I agree with Anthony, and thank you all for all that you do. Yeah. Ralph, Good Florence, job. and Tom. Thank you very much. Christine. Thank you, Christine. Cheryl? Yeah. I echo with what Anthony and Christine said. I just think Crompon did a wonderful job, and how they hit on all aspects of STEAM is just unbelievable. So they got a lot done in a day. It's really wonderful that they had the time to do all this and then to come tonight. So wonderful job. Yes. Mike? I'm good. You're good? Okay. Um, well, yeah, I echo everything. But the other thing, um, Florence, that our staff is presenting numerous times at the tech expos is really exciting. And you know, 10 years ago when we started with this technology journey, one of the things we said was we needed the teachers to be able to understand the technologies so they could teach it to the kids. And it's nice to see that they're now masters in the area and teaching other teachers. So thank you very much for leading that charge for us. Thank you for your support. It's wonderful. Thank you. Um, Ralph, Florence, Tom, anything? I just wanted to comment, if you don't mind, about okay. two of the people that uh, we remembered in a moment of mm -hmm. silence, and uh, that was Mary Walsh and also Eleanor Fortuna, uh, Fortuna Fortunato, excuse me. Uh, both of them were uh, longstanding employees of our school district. Uh, Mary Walsh, in, in fact, was a member of the CTA, uh, was a CTA and a member of the Crompon community in the Library Media Center. And, a kind, gentle, wonderful woman who loved children. And um, I, I always was proud to be there when she was there with the big smile, welcoming the kids and helping them. And um, Eleanor Fortunato worked with us for many years in the district office. And I think we, we were fortunate <laughs> uh, to, um, to know her. 
Uh, she was very, very proud of her 31 years of service to our district. Uh, she was another one that always had a constant smile on her face and uh, was gentle and humble and sweet and forever grateful to be part of a community that she embraced and loved. Uh, so they, they were both two very good people who I feel fortunate to not only have known, but to have worked with uh, closely uh, in my 10 years here. So I just want to remember both of them. They'll be greatly missed. Thank you. Thank you. Florence, Tom, anything? Uh, we're up to public comment. Anybody wishing to speak? Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, guys. Good night, everybody.